Hey guys, so we have really good, I know I say it a lot, but this one, I'm not even kidding. We got a really good episode because we had Jen from Artistic Painting Studio join us and I can't even fully comprehend all the awesome things that we talked about. So you're gonna have to tune in yourself to see them. Coming up next. See, we're still having tea. Hey guys, welcome back to Craft Tea. This is actually episode 40 for real, for real this time. I know I didn't have it right last week, but um, yeah, sort of right. Uh, we do have a guest again this time, really excited. So we have Jen Ferguson from Artistic Painting studio. I don't want to mess it up. I get tongue tied when I say the name. So. So I was looking at him. I, did, like, I didn't want to, but then it just, I was. I, I feel like it rolls off the tongue, but it also like I, I, I muddled it up. So I, I actually practiced it before we started. <laughs> um, uh, but Jen, please, if you want to uh, go into more about you and what exactly you guys do. Well, awesome. And thank you guys so much for having me here today. This is really nice. Um, so yeah, if I had only known 30 something years ago, I probably would have chosen such a long name and we would have bought the APS.com. Oh. Uh, but <laughs> I keep looking every once in a while, somebody might sell it someday. I never even thought about that. It's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, come on. I, you know, if I only had known what I was doing, I would have found a short, short name. Um, but uh, like I said, uh, been in business. I think this is our 35th year. That's so cool. Um, and we pretty much have morphed. Okay. So originally I started off as the stenciled garden. Okay. That one's even harder to throw Ooh. off. Here. Okay. Because <laughs> um, I started with the art of stenciling. And um, it just has grown and changed and grown and changed. Yeah, with time, I, I, anybody that owns a business knows it's a roller coaster and there are times where you have to pivot. Um, you just have to freshen up. Uh, your direction just kind of goes right instead of left sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Very but, much. But it's been a, a fun journey. And um, from what we were to start with to where we are today <laughs> is two completely different uh, business models, made, basically. Um, before, we were a walk-in um, stu you know, studio and store. People came to shop with us. And then um, technology came along, and there was the Internet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I started my business before there was an internet. <laughs> I think even before, oh no, we had cell phones, but we didn't have the internet we have today. So uh, we did business a little bit different, but we were a whole community, walk in, you know, come by, take a class. Um, and then as things have changed over the last, I think, seven years, we have gone completely online. Um, if somebody walks through our door, we're like, oh, Hi. Yeah. Are you lost? <laughs> are, you, are you lost? Is there Did you thought the guy next door? Right. <laughs> um, but we do have a little tiny bit of walk-in traffic, but mainly everything is online. I teach online. We have our online subscription, our complete store of all of our supplies and materials. Um, we ship all over the world. We actually have retailers in other countries uh, as well as in the States. Um, so yeah, it's it's changed and um, it has been a fun fun journey. <laughs> you travel to other countries for business too, right? Um, that happened to be our um, UK distributor. There was an event there that we wanted to attend with her um, because she'd only been a distributor for us for maybe a year and a half or so. Mm -hmm. So we went to support her to continue to grow our um, brand recognition over in the UK. And it was fabulous. Yeah, I got a chance to go to London. Any reason to go it's to so London exciting. is a good reason, especially yeah. something pretty like crafting. Yeah, it was all on furniture painting, so uh, it was a great event, and uh, we had a blast, and uh, I think bringing in six new retailers over in the UK area, so How it was cool good. is that? Congratulations. That's really awesome. Thank you. 
So I'm curious, because you mentioned that your business is proceeds, you know, before the internet. What was marketing like for before the internet? Um, what would you press do? Releases. Yeah, we, we did market. Mm-hmm. We did press releases a lot. Um, you got to know your local um, staff at the newspaper. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always figured they needed something fun to, uh, you know, occasionally do some kind of nice, fun news. Um, so I did everything I could to get featured. Um, we had home shows that we did, and then we sent out a physical newsletter that we put in the mail. Yes. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's like so interesting. And is not just like the evolution of your business, but just the evolution of how you market your business. And you've been through a lot of that. Uh, and that's so cool. Yeah, like, because even just saying newspaper, half the people that watch this definitely... Forgot. Uh, more than half the people definitely do not receive a newspaper anymore. Oh, no. There might be, like, 5% that do, and those are, like, the ones that just refuse to let go. You yeah, know? it's like my dad and, like, you know, his friends. <laughs> yeah, you used to work for the newspaper. I did. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, I used to love my Sunday paper, and we don't even get that anymore, but I think... Most newspapers are now online. They're a digital. Um, They're an app. app you know, a digital uh, possibility instead of trying to get something physical. But it seems like what I have noticed is because of um, how things cycle and life kind of does, you know, this. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that really is, I don't want to say popular, but a way to kind of go back to some old school marketing is press releases. Right. Uh so we are back doing those once again. And my daughter kind of looked at me like, what? And I'm like, yeah, that's how we used to get news out, you know? And if your press release gets picked up, um, I mean, it could just be like any kind of syndication or, you know, that it just kind of goes and goes and goes and it can just get released and released. I mean, if it's good information, um, you never know. People need something to talk about. Right. They need something to write about. They need, you know, current news. So... It's just another way. Um, but yeah, we're going back to doing some old school marketing once again. But I don't think we'll ever fold those newsletters and put them in the mail again. Sure. <laughs> I can only imagine. That was, a, I mean, it's a different time. I just love, I love hearing about it, especially because you've gotten to, you've had the company the whole time. So I'm sure there was a time where you're like, you know, the next thing comes around, you're like, no, we're going to maybe put a Facebook, or not Facebook ad first, <laughs> and some kind of internet ad, I guess, when that the time where it's like, we're not, call a newspaper anymore we're not stuffing envelopes anymore like yeah it's it's yeah. definitely changed because marketing is completely different i mean and i know people that are maybe 15 to 20 years younger than me where that even marketing that they learned in college is different than marketing today i mean it just oh, yeah. continues to evolve um, yeah we now do facebook ads we do google ads um, we do try to rely on this much free uh, ways to reach people, sure. um, which is, you know, just organic reach um, instead of always being paid reach. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And this is the time you, <laughs> yeah. well, and this is the season that. to influencers, For of sure. course, because influencers have changed marketing over the last three years tremendously. Obviously, there was influencers before the pandemic, but after the pandemic, it was like a whole nother monster. Now it's like, that's how, yeah. that's actually how I got hooked. Because Nicole Sutherland, I mean, I've known about you guys, but I was terrified. I'm like, I can't do foils. I don't know what to do with foils. Don't don't give me foils. That's another thing that I'll buy them all and never use it. And here comes Nicole Sutherland. Do you want some of my foils? I'll just I'll, I'll put together some foils for you. I've got some glue, right? And I'll and the next thing I know, now I'm subscribed to the sub box and I'm looking at foils all the time. <laughs> That's what, it, yeah, the package is sitting at the door. Uh... On the table. Oh, because they just oh, got it last one. week. Yeah, yeah, last one just <laughs> oh, came. Yeah, yeah, they just went out. But yeah, uh, the foils are, I mean, they're just amazing. We have actually been playing with them for close to 30 years. They're not new. Um, but the companies now with the manufacturing um, of them, they used to always be all just golds and silvers and coppers and every shade of that. And then you would start to find that a couple of companies started to branch out and maybe have a pink or a green, okay? Right. Uh-huh. Uh, and then in the last um, probably around seven, six, seven years is where I really have felt the manufacturers have um, just taken on a whole nother light with the uh, different patterns and colors and holographics and 
you know, everything that we can now get. We custom design a bunch of our foils so they are exclusive to us, which is really cool. That must be so much fun. Uh, but, you know, they're fun because they really can go on anything. It's, you know, it is... It's Basically, still blowing my mind, everything you can put them on. I'm, every time you guys are putting them on something, I'm like, Dick, they're putting on a hat. They're, it's on a hat now. That's like, what I, That's how she <laughs> got me to want them. Because she's, look, you can put them on. Like, she's smart because she just points me at it. How she said, she's like, I'll end up buying everything. So she just makes me buy everything kind of in lieu of her. She'll be like, well, look, babe, you can put them on shoes. Don't you want to do some shoes? And I'm like... <laughs> I, I kind of do now want to do some shoes. So now I have a collection of foils. I haven't oh, used any yet. Like full transparency, I haven't used any yet because I'm scared. He keeps his foils separate from mine. He won't, I get mad. He won't put his foils <laughs> on the same side of the dream box as my foils because I might accidentally use them. Exactly. Don't go using. I handpicked my designs <laughs> very specifically. I'm not sure what for yet, but they are definitely for something. I, it's just, I gotta rip the bandaid off. As soon as I do it, I'm not, I know there's no turning back. You know, and we, we still find people. We have people that literally are in our subscription box. Now, in our mm -hmm. subscription box, I would say these are diehard foil people. They're crafters, they're makers. They need this stuff every month. They need, you know, have somebody else curate the collection for them. Mm -hmm. And then I find a couple of people are in there and they never, ever use them. They're just collecting. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what I'm doing right now. I've used some, but I'm collecting. And I did so yeah. So I'm I'm doing basically to your products what I like get annoyed that people do with my products is that I just I I'm afraid to use it and mess it up because then I'm like, what if I can't get it again? Which I'm sure I can get it again. It started, but it's happening. Yes, yeah. <laughs> They'll always come out with something cooler if they don't have that print. True. Speaking of shoes, did you see the cleats I did for my son? Ooh, no. you're gonna have to go poking around and I'm gonna I'm telling you, I'm <laughs> gonna I think we've only posted pics because we haven't done the tutorial yet. Uh-huh. Right? Uh -huh. He um he had seen on good old TikTok, that's where you learn everything these days, right? Right. Sure. Um, <laughs> that somebody was doing custom cleats, but mainly football players. So he was like Okay, Ma, I bought two pairs of cleats. I want you to do one pair. And, you know, I was, I even went and watched all the other videos because I wanted to see if they're doing this for football players and they're wearing them out on, you know, the football field. How are they going to last? Okay, it was like my thing. Um, so I did a pair for him. He took him to the DR with him because he's playing winter ball um, over there for a few weeks. Uh -huh. uh, so we're going to see how they hold up. If they hold up, I'm going to do a new pair for spring training. <laughs> Did you post them in your Facebook group? Um, I was just seeing it. Oh, wait. Ones. I think I found them. Oh, they're, oh, they're, they're so too. cool. Yeah, just a pick. We haven't done anything else, uh, but they'll be on. He's into it. Video. He's into yeah. it. Um, Rhea, I love them. Make sure you send, send me a... I'm going to... Yeah, we'll put it in the video. Um, I Because I just started cartoonifying a set of sneakers, like a set of, like, you know, slip-ons or whatever. And I'm just like, I'm like half drawing blanks on like kind of how I want to go in the direction. But I, and I know I remembered when we were talking to you at TumblrCon, you, you were saying that oh, you could put it on the, you. like the rubber part of the shoe, right? Like the bottom part. And that's why I'm like, that'd be great if I just chose one of the patterns that I got from you at TumblrCon and, and did, <laughs> did the, the rubber part. What is that? Is that the sole? It's not the sole, I was going to say, no, yeah. I don't think so. I was gonna um, say sole, like the, yes. of the sole, because normally isn't the rubber wrapped up. Yeah. My shoes, yeah, it's part of the sole. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not the under part. <laughs> right. But that part, <laughs> I thought that would that would maybe now that I'm looking at that, I'm thinking that might uh, be another level to add to my cartoonified sneakers. That so hopefully would, I finish them. Would you uh would you seal that? No. I still would seal would, right? it. Just as, you know, no matter what, I mean, I sealed the crud out of those plates that I sent Tyler, so I'm curious, okay? They've had so much rain since he actually got there, well, just this last week he flew over, um, that they've only, I think he's only pitched once. Um, so I'm like, okay, I want to see how these cleats hold up. <laughs> you know, they need to get some wear and tear. You're going to do an end of season po uh, post about the cleats and see how they're holding up. Like the last, right after the last game, just put a nice 
to re- literally redo that same photo. <laughs> I know this is how they looked at the end of season. <laughs> I mean, maybe they'll look gorgeous. Uh, what, what would you seal that with? We I was we don't seal. What I was for you. <laughs> so glitter, I see glitter shoes. We don't seal them. The glitter just kind of holds on there. I'll 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 bring you. Yeah. Uh-huh. See, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm finna. This I'm finna fill some shoes. We had tons of that. Oh, that's it. Just okay. that. And there's, I used to mainly use just Rust-Oleum 2X. This one's a little bit different. Right. I like the sprayer on it too, because it actually has like a nozzle that you can dial to get different sprays and angles. Well, that's fancy. So uh, yeah, and I did the matte because a baseball player can't have anything shiny on their shoes. So right. I did matte instead of, um, and we also picked a foil that was not metallic. Uh, sure. We didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> That'd be fine. See, I would have just been a gloss. But that's just as simple as that. Just as simple, as, like a clear coat. Jason's mind's blown. Right yeah, I'm literally just it. I because my mind overcomplicates crafting. I go so deep down the rabbit hole. So there was another product that she had recommended, and I'm I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. That's another. One. <laughs> yes. But I'm going to use it for other things. But it says makes paint stick. Uh, it was ready to paint in five minutes. Um, I put it on, I think, twice just because I wanted to make sure that we had a really good bond. Because with foils, that's important. Because it's not like you're just uh, painting something on. You're putting an adhesive down, and then you got to put that foil carrier sheet on and rip it off. So bonding is super important when working with foils. So you might try that. And then if you're going to tape off shoes, my best secret is vinyl tape. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I found some wider stuff, but this was like in the um, plumbing. Ah. It's electrical tape, really. I was, I was going to say, it looks like yeah. electrical tape, but red. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I was all over the place finding all the stuff. That's how you find some of the best stuff. That's He has suggested some of the things um, like that when I first started crafting, because he'd be like, why don't you clear coat it in this? I'm like, you can't. No one does that. You can't do that. Not not done. No, no one does that. Don't talk to me about car stuff or wall stuff. Don't be weird. Mm -hmm. Now, like 10 years later, we're yeah. I'm finally opening it up and I'm like, all right, all right, I'll listen to some of your suggestions. Yeah, that, I think that one of the first things was I was like, all right, so there's got to be a way to streamline this process. And I was like, if you're just going to seal these, and this is when Sarah was just doing plain, like solid glitter before they got all complicated, I was like, why don't. <laughs> Why don't you just like use car clear coat and just clear these out and then they're sealed. I was like, there's like, I haven't heard any stories of someone licking a car and dying of cancer or something. <laughs> Th those are, you know, those are things that run through my head. Cause someone's going to be like, you can't just clear coat a cup. And I'm like, but why? Who we're made talking, that rule? We're talking 2018. People were ruthless on the internet. They're we still doing, ruthless. Well, they were worse <laughs> back then. We were doing whatever we wanted and we were just mean to, oh, we weren't, but people were mean to each other. And I'm like, I'm not going to be one. Not going to catch me slipping out there in these Tumblr groups getting, you know, I, I'm positive. Every man for himself back then. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'd still get flack if I suggested something like that. But it's just like, if you're licking the outside of your cups, there is far more to be worried about. Yes, we have more problems than just Yes. Uh, right. Can you just sip out of that plastic straw that's full of all kinds of BPAs and shit anyway? Just like, argue with the straw maker and leave me alone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right yeah, that's fine. And this one's even made by Nicole, okay? I love it. She's everywhere. It's her birthday today. Is it really? Well, it is indeed. Reach out to her. Yeah. She, uh, we were, we were making uh, jokes about Starbucks has triple stars today. So we keep saying that Starbucks is doing triple stars for Nicole's birthday. <laughs> Aww, she's so sweet. She really is. And I am really thankful that I floated the, the that I was nervous about foils because I showed her this cup. And I'm like, I really want to do this, but I want to do it different. I was explaining it to her. She's like, you know, rambles off how I'm going to do it. And I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I can't do foils. I don't know. Even when I did do the foils, I wound up doing it wrong because I can't just sit down and listen to a whole tutorial. I'm like, all right, yup, yup, glue, yup, got glue, surface, got surface, foil, got foil, pressure, got pressure. Let's go. <laughs> so I did my, my Wednesday craft with my foils, my little trinket boxes. And then I watched a live of yours that night, and you're, you say, 
you're like, oh yeah, you can leave the glue on there for like an hour. Some, you know, I think you were even saying like days at one point. And I'm like, I waited like three minutes, maybe three and a half. <laughs> yep. The longer you wait, the better. <laughs> and I was going to say, if you guys ever want me to come and do a live with you and take you through the whole process and yes. get you over that fear. Uh -huh. <laughs> I need the help. Yes, all the time. We have to set that up. be so much fun. Picture. <laughs> Once I like rip the bandaid off, though, I can't be stopped. I'm telling you. <laughs> Well, That's the band-aid's kind of been ripped off. You're, I know. I've been crafting. Oils. I'm just out here crafting. That's why I just had to make sure that I have the assets. And then once I'm building confidence during this episode right now. <laughs> you can tell when we talk about something that actually interests Jason. Other, you know, in, I'm animated. Yeah, other than the things that don't. He's like, uh, glitter, that's cool, I guess. Like, I have enough glitter. We've already seen glitter. I just, it's hard to be impressed by something that you work with, like, all the time or that you're surrounded with all the time i feel like there's probably people in instances that come up to you and be like have you seen this foil and you're like yeah i have <laughs> i still get excited about it i call it the peel and reveal okay that you yes. grab, grab and then you get to peel it back and peek and it's like i mean i'm so excited still to see it i got it did you see the hat i did last night i i was just it. looking yeah. for it on your instagram by chance because i saw it in the facebook group Gorgeous. Ashley like, hasn't been here to take a picture, so it's not on the Instagram yet. <laughs> but yeah, this came out so. It looks fun. amazing. It's so pretty. And I'm gonna figure the foils out. I'm gonna figure yeah, them out. I, mean, I have so I many things to cover in foil. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that uh, a lot of your customers use it mostly for like furniture, right? Oh yeah. Oh, well, everything. I started off, the first time I ever used foils, I did an entire wall. I didn't go small. I went big, okay? Wow. So, I mean, my company started off as the art of stenciling. So I was out actually installing and doing artwork in people's homes. Uh, I became a licensed contractor when I started getting into decorative finishes, faux finishes, and, you know, plaster and all that. And my main job was to go out and do people's homes. I had somebody that ran the store. I did the teaching. I did the custom work. Um, and yeah, the first time I ever did foils, man, we just slapped them on like, you know, basically like wallpaper and foiled people's walls. <laughs> so you have to awesome. douse the whole thing in glue and let it dry? Or is there another process to walls? Um, you're rolling on the adhesive. How cool. Letting it, yeah, letting it sit. And the adhesive back then, and even the foils back then were not as easy to work with as they are now. Um, and part of that is why we ended up actually having our own foil adhesive manufactured is because the other product on the market back then was horrible. You put it on, you let it sit overnight, you put another coat on, you let it sit overnight, and you pray that you'd get a good transfer. The only thing good about back in that day is we were scrubbing those walls. So we had pretty good guns, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were literally would scrub for hours on these walls and transfer the foil. Wow. I'm but gonna yeah, do that, something cool. I want, I want a cool foil reveal. I'm gonna let this glue dry and actually get, cause I was just thinking, I is it Misty Leonard, I think? She has some really good reveals. I feel like she gets some like some full sheets too. And I want a full sheet project. I don't know what, but I'm gonna find something. I'm excited now. We have a collection literally of furniture that we've just been like amassing because we're just like, you know, you just, things that either you were gonna throw out or a neighbor was throwing out and you're like, ah, I can do something with that. But then it's it's just in a room or in, in rooms uh, that we just, and they're just still not touched. And a lot of it was just like, what so do we do with it? You know? I want to refinish furniture so bad. It's just the way we're structured here. Something. Yeah, like I clear the area out, right? And then I do start working on it. And then three days later, I got to stop, pivot, work on something else and never come back. Well, yeah, that's why I love the fact that um, the space I'm in right now is my studio space only. This is for my filming, my painting, my teaching. Um, everything that's not related to the warehouse. The warehouse is actually behind me, behind that wall. Um, so we have two separate buildings, or not buildings, but two separate units. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and this way, I do have projects all over the place, okay? <laughs> and, you know, a couple of them sit there for months before you get back to them. But, but it's a project actually, space. Yeah, I got I got project space. <laughs> <Plenty>. <laughs> that's what we need. Oh, we got project space. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shun, shun. The little nubs on, her, on Nicole's pineapple that she did with foils. Pineapple nubs? So it's not even like a full foil project, it's just a little No, I've seen, I've seen, those are, those are mostly the examples of uses of foil that I've seen in the past, were more like, like a, like a, a little splotch of glue and then like a gold or silver accent or something, like accent type things. But like you showing me the whole hat and the, the cleats and stuff, that's why I'm like, okay, I want to do this right now. That's a welcome sign, I'm pretty sure. I love getting him all excited. I'm just showing the whole Instagram. Because I watch, you know. I I haven't caught your live in uh, probably, oh, probably over a month now. I don't even know how many how much time's passed since anything. But I watch. Jason will be watching now that I've got his attention. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, I mean, my whole thing is we always talk about our why. Why we're in business. Why we do what we do. And my why is truly and has been forever is to inspire others to be creative. I feel it's good for your heart and your soul and your mind to be able to do something creative and whatever it is. I don't care if it's baking, sewing, sewing, you know, if you're making cups, whatever your creative outlet is, I just think it's so good for everybody to have that in their life. So Mm -hmm. my why is to try to constantly inspire people just to be creative. And, uh, you know, our focus at one point, you know, was totally the finishers in the world, okay, the professionals. And uh, I taught at that level and, you know, constantly was trying to help them grow their businesses. And then it was like, well, there's only so many of those people in the world, okay? So we started kind of scaling back. And when we scaled back to furniture, it opened the world to more people. And then we started scaling back and doing a little bit more of the craft type projects or home decor. And then it opens up to even more people that you can reach. So, um, you know, I'm I'm pushing six zero, and I'm still going strong. I still love what I do. Uh, I'm I'm still excited, Jason, to feel on reveal. Okay. I love hearing that because that's so important. That's me and Jason yeah. talk about similar things all the time. And even with the glitter guy, like I tell him, like if you're not happy when we come in here, like granted, every day is not delightful, but you're it's you're still here. You know what I mean? He's not at his doing something not this but if there's ever a time where this isn't your joy i need to know we need to pivot we need to bring your joy to it you know what i mean we need to figure out how to incorporate i'm easy <laughs> well, it's anything correct for me you know as your business changes i mean we've been lucky to be in business for 35 years i now employ uh three people they're all related <laughs> My daughter, my son, and my stepdaughter are, are full-time. Well, my son's not full-time, uh, but the two girls are full-time. I mean, they're they're who are running the back end of it. I can be gone for three weeks, and um, the place doesn't fall apart. My email gets a little backed up, and there's certain things that don't get done, but the, the business continues. So, you know, that's our next pivot in the, the journey is that I get to work less. I come in and only do content creation. Um, the girls and Tyler just kind of keep things running and continue, hopefully, for another 35 years. Uh, that's my hope. I think that's so cool. That is. It's awesome. That's the goal right there. Pass it on down. Yeah. I mean, it's it's supporting, you know, four family members right now. So you can't you can't say, t- you know, too little about that. It's just pretty good. Yeah. Right. And, and working, I mean... Technically, I, I would assume their kids work for you, but still generally working for themselves, so to speak. It, it's a beautiful thing. It, you know, you're the boss, but having to, to, I hate what I'm about to say, but a real boss would probably be a lot worse. But I just mean like, you know, like not someone you want to be around. I'm sure they just want to be around you. It's a whole different ball game. Well, I mean, it's fun. I mean, I'm definitely the boss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the boss that, you know, if they got French benefits, they wouldn't have if I wasn't mom. Exactly. That's what I mean. Car insurance being paid. Phone bills are being paid. They get more time off than, <laughs> you know, so there's lots of benefits. And then they have skin in the game. I mean, mm-hmm. to me, it's like they know that this is going to be theirs someday. You know, uh, eventually, you know, this old lady isn't going to be doing content. Ashley's going to be coming over here and making some projects and having some fun. That's gonna be so and cool. even my viewers, they miss her. Okay, she was coming over here on a, like a semi regular basis, but now my time frame and her time frame mm, don't match, so she hasn't come over here too often to do any lives with me. But they're they're still asking for her. She's got a whole warehouse to run behind you. <laughs> well, she mainly does 
Um, all the social media, the emails, she writes everything. Um, she She's that person that pushes all that content out. She get video edits everything. That's so cool. Um, so everybody's kind of got their place and their job, but um, without, I mean, at one point I ran it all myself, okay? Now there's no way I could handle this without everybody. Right, it's too much. And, and then you would just literally be doing that 24 seven and still come up short, I'm sure, because I mean, yeah. We still have people and we come up short. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we have people, we still come out. Every yeah. day we come up short, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, I keep, there's a definite difference between the hours in the day and the hours that I have stuff I have to get done <laughs> or want to get done. I think it's when you're um, an entrepreneur, you love to do all things. And that is what gets me in trouble is because I'll hear something yeah. or see something. I'm like, oh, we should. And my kids are just like, back off, mom. I mean, just slow down. <laughs> That's going to be me. That, that, that. That's absolutely going to be me. My my kids will be doing the same. Like, can we not add another craft to this house, mom? Seriously. Um, or can we not add another task to the week? That's that's actually like, uh, can we just not add anything else to my plate right now? And I'm like, okay. That's Jason. <laughs> like, that's like the struggle. It's like, listen, I like your ideas. They're just not good for right now. This is a new yeah. way of telling me this, by the way. This is something we've been working on that he just came up with this way of speaking to me, and it's beautiful. <laughs> well, I had to add those things because it felt, and I said, I was like, I know a lot of times it feels that I'm just saying no, but I'm not just saying no. I'm like, there's more to it than that. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes when you're on the receiving end of the no constantly, though, it just feels, I get it. It feels that you're just not being heard, you know, or not being appreciated enough. And uh, that's not always the case. There's not always yeah. enough appreciation to go around. <laughs> Working together and living together full time for both is definitely a challenge. Oh yes, yes, it definitely is. I mean, Ashley has lived with us a couple of times since she moved down here to Southern California, but it was in between like roommates or apartments or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's that whole thing. Okay. Now we're living together and we work together all day. So there's too much of me in your life. <laughs> Never the other way around. Right. And it's, it's hard yeah. when you, when you feel, especially when like work is kind of what your every day is, especially being entrepreneurs and it's hard just in the moment to not talk about work when you're not supposed to be talking about work like we're supposed to be on the couch enjoying whatever and if we didn't work live together I would come up with a thought you know maybe while I'm watching a show and be inspired and just put that in the bank and be like we'll talk about that tomorrow morning but that's not the case because she's next to me so I'm like let's talk about it now and then it's just like are we talking about work again we were just watching the Grinch <laughs> but that's the fun side of work content what's content whatever you were going to say about making something yeah. oh you weren't talking about being inspired for a new project i'm no, already just like so many projects yeah too many projects no more projects <laughs> so unless it's with foils now i'll do those in all of your uh years of experience and i'm sure you have multiple uh of these but what's uh, one of the more um struggles that you've had What's what you know? Something that you've met and, and overcome in your business. Gosh, there's been quite a few struggles. Um, I should have prepped you with some of these questions. I'm going to think ahead on some people. <laughs> uh, well, you know, one thing that I thought was really funny is um, I had a CPA for years. And, you know, my was back in two thousand eight nine. Yeah, you know, our economy tanked two thousand seven two thousand eight. Oh right. I mean, we just, we tanked, everything tanked. And it was, you know, sometimes when things tank, it takes a while to hit every industry or every level. But he would basically come to me every year after I do my taxes and say, now, why don't you just get a real job? Because I just don't see how you're going to make it with this. So my favorite story is I really like to send them my 2023 tax return and basically say, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here, you guys. And we broke seven figures. So, I mean, it you know, it's perseverance. Um, no matter what happens, you just have to love what you do enough to put everything back into it. And I don't care who tells you that, uh, you know, 
you can control, you can set these boundaries, you can make these office hours, you can do all these things. What's a boundary? (laughs) These coaches out there are always telling you, you don't have to work 24 seven, you can work four days, you know, four hours a day, and you can make seven figures and you can do this. And I'm like, you know, it's your heart and soul. It's truly your passion and something you love to do. It's going to be your heart and soul. And you're going to do everything to keep that business going through the rough times, you know, and I guess when things are going well, don't forget what you do during the rough times that you're constantly advertising, you're constantly promoting. You don't let any of that stop because the good times might be here, but they might fall down. Mm -hmm. So if you're constantly keeping your wheel turning and doing what you do consistently, it pays off to keep going. Okay. Very much so. so. I would say that's probably one of my biggest advices is just never, never stop. Okay. Never stop doing what you do. Consistency, consistency. Okay. Let's see if I can say the word. <laughs> um, it does pay. Um, and just, you know, if you really have a passion for what you do, I'm not going to say there are no days that feel like work because it is work. Okay. We're, we've got parts to it. Like you said in the very beginning, this is what people think my business looks mm-hmm. like fun and we're just you know doing fun projects and playing all the time but on the other side they don't see that I'm sitting with a laptop on the couch and I'm doing emails or doing work because I didn't have time to get it all done during the day right Um, when we go to do a live it could be an hour prep to get that live going and then you're on a live for an hour and then you got to clean it up (laughs) so they don't realize that your live just took three hours maybe of your day. Right. You know, when you were sure supposed to be eating dinner. Yeah. You know, <laughs> supposed to be doing something else. Yes. Okay. Or <laughs> um, no, that's so know, very true. Yeah. We've always made it work. I mean, my daughter's 31. Is she gonna be 32 this year? Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 32 and 30 uh 30 and 31 right now. I actually be 32 at the end of the year. They're not that close in age, okay? <laughs> Just sound like it at the moment. Um, but, I mean, they have grown up in it. This business existed before they did. I mean, I was out on job sites stenciling when I was eight, nine months pregnant and could barely, like, get around my own belly to do anything. <laughs> um, and so now they're working they, for you. Yeah, now they're working for me. And at one point, I never, ever thought they would work for me. It was just like, oh, mom, you know, your business. But then slowly, you know, I actually had like a marketing degree. She was looking for something to do part time. I'm like, you know, you could be a virtual assistant, start doing our social media. So that was about seven years ago now. Uh, And Tyler is just so stinking smart. Okay. (laughs) He just started helping on the back end of the business and he runs our website. He has put together, uh, we have like Shopify, Entreport, uh, WordPress. Uh, I mean, it's so many different components on the back end that runs everything. He's the brain behind that. That stuff gets very confusing. I take one look at it and I'm like overwhelmed. I'm like, I can't do it. I'm frustrated. Jason's like, no one even asked you to do that. Can you move over and let me back into my to what I was doing. I'm like, I just thought I could help. I'm sorry. He just starts like, like hitting buttons and pulling on levers and stuff. I don't know what happens back there when she does things. Oh, I look at it and it's like, I tell the kids, I still want to be involved in every aspect. Even if I'm not going to be doing it, I want to know how it should be done or understand the process. And I said, there's certain things that just make my head hurt. So I'm not going to deal with it at all, but it's still nice that you have your, at least you have the idea and know what everything is going on. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go into the back end of the system because I would break it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but knowing how things kind of work and how the flow goes and you know, how all these sequence emails and all this stuff is, you know, working behind us. I mean, it's nice. It's nice for me to understand part of the process. I just don't have to do it. <laughs> no, and I don't have the patience to either. I don't. I hate it. If I can't figure it out right away, then I I just don't do it anymore. And I that's not a great thing for you know a habit or anything to build up. But I just realize that that's what I do. So uh, it's another reason why I pivot between so many crafts. <laughs> like, nope, I'm not great at this right off the bat. Got to go. Where's the uh, Where's the next craft? Bring on the foils. <laughs> 
Mine is basically like, oh, no, I don't want to deal with this. This one, my head hurt. Okay, I can give that to Ashley. I can give that to Tyler. I can give that to Amber. I mean, I just, I delegate now. I just don't let my brain have to hurt. <laughs> right. And that's important, I think, for a lot of people to learn, especially we still, I think we've got a better handle on it now than we had before, but delegating things to other people. I think a lot of um, peer businesses that are out there in, in the craft community also could definitely use some encouragement on delegating tasks to other people they don't realize how much it's going to help them in the bigger picture oh it does because the whole thing is is i'm the content creator and if i don't have time to create content ashley really doesn't have a job right and we're probably not selling anything so amber doesn't have jobs um so it really is true that i free up my plate or also you can look at it in where your employees are gifted where are their gifts where are their talents what where where what can they possibly take over that they might even be better at than you? Right. That it's going to give them more variety or allow them to have a little bit more filling of that skin in the game and giving them the opportunity to grow so that those tasks are handled and they're handled by somebody that maybe isn't enjoying it more um, or just better at it. Right. Or it gets it off your plate. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It, you know, there's many ways to look at it. Okay. You can look at it as delegating or you can look at it as I'm helping this person out. I know that they need more to do. They need something else that maybe they're standing. This will give them a time to set, you know, just something that mixes up their day as well. Right. And it's all helping each other help each other, really help the business yeah. and we'll all, you know. Uh, so I feel it. like it's definitely at least for us, has been the, uh, probably for a lot of business owners, just the biggest hurdle is relinquishing control. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's like near <laughs> it's impossible. Not control issues, but. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just, especially if it was something that you did yourself previously. And then even if you like hired someone that's supposed to be doing that in your place to alleviate that time and alleviate your plate, it's just like, yeah. But I still want to do it. <laughs> but you're not doing it quite the way that I do it. So now I'm upset. Like, why are you not doing it the way I taught you? Well, I have to have a, a really good open mind about maybe they're not going to do it the way I did it. Right. So maybe they have a better way of doing it. And then maybe they can figure out a more efficient way. So that has been a learning curve for me. Because, of course, you know, I've had the business so long and, yeah, I did my things my way, (laughs) which is not always the right way. It was just my way. It worked when it was just you, you know, and that's all you know. And it doesn't mean that it doesn't it doesn't mean it was something that was bad. It just means that maybe there's a new way. That's something I'm definitely trying to learn every day. Yeah, definitely. It's an everyday thing because it's like you said, it's when you did it yourself, it's proven concept. Like, I know that it works this way. So if anybody else is like, we're going to try it this way. No, no, no. no. You're saying that I'm dumb? Like, no, I, no, it I works this way. way. Remember when we talked about this? It works this way. Why would you try it any other way? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, but that mentality is definitely not always the right mentality. Yeah, sometimes we just have to relinquish a little bit of that control and you know, <laughs> kind of move forward. But, you know, it could be hard hurdle, hurdles, but I think they're always good for growth. It is, because it can be very rewarding to see if if someone does take that task, spin it around, show you a new, better, efficient way to do it. You just won, didn't you? Yeah. It's got to get Our biggest hurdle right now that we're dealing with is organization, because we have over 450 different patterns and colors of foils. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, That's a lot. So we're still struggling on the best way to store them and maximize our storage facility. Yeah, it's it's still kind of crazy over there. Because <laughs> you can't have, they need to be protected, right? I assume you can't just throw them. Like a bag is glitter, I'll just toss that, you know? <laughs> you can't be doing that The foils, they'll get all messed up. Yeah, we can't just toss them in the corner. Um, but yeah, just trying to figure out, we still, we keep coming up with certain solutions and you know, our favorite solution are these one particular type of cabinet drawer that the foils fit in nice and neat, mm-hmm. but it's not conducive to all size of our foils mm-hmm. and yeah, mm-hmm. trying to keep our company separate. And yeah, that's our, that is our biggest um, hurdle that we, we deal with uh, is the organization because the person that cuts all the foils, because we still offer by the foot, 
Uh-huh. Um, all 450 of them are in one room in drawers. Okay, so it, it but um, if you're not on the cutting table, finding something is really hard. And if Amber takes off for a week, mm. she doesn't put the stickers back on half of them. So she doesn't know like, where right. anything is. Because it's her you're world, like, right? She knows where everything is. I think this is, <laughs> you're like having to go back and match it and uh -huh. double check because she doesn't put the names back on any of them. Man. Sounds a lot like our warehouse. <laughs> sort of. I mean, well, you were just like, literally just saying with we. So right now we have our Fusion Advent calendar, and all custom mixed glitters. There's 20 new custom mixed glitters, and all of those had to get mixed in their big bags and everything, and they get bagged separately. And the name, not all of them are named when we come up with them. So some of them, you know, we're waiting yeah. to be inspired, whatever. But if a name was made, you write it on a piece of paper, rip it off, and throw it in the thing, and the girls would. Uh, put all that glitter in the appropriate shakers and then take that piece of paper and put it with those shakers. And then that's like, all right, it's ready for the labeler when Jason makes the label. But if there was any left in the bag, that didn't get, they didn't write a second name and put it in there. So like, there's like just bags of just like m custom right. mixed glitter. You can't even just go match it to the raw materials. Now you're like, okay, so this is a glitter that we just mixed custom doesn't really definitely have a name. It might have a name, I'm not sure. So like there's no, it doesn't have a paper trail yet per se. <laughs> so it's like playing, now you're just grabbing shakers of glitter and going. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of those things where I had to go back to the girls and I'm like, guys, what, what did you think was gonna happen? Like I need a little bit more here. And then it's a learning experience for them and us. And we work together and and then recipes get lost. I lose all Because that happens in all different ways. We, have, we had, the original system was my favorite system. I had my composition notebook and I hand wrote all the recipes in there and I literally wrote all my composition notebook, top secret glitter recipes. <laughs> and that's where I had my hard copy. And I was like, this isn't fun to, you know, this isn't gonna work for everybody. So I made a folder in our Dropbox that I keep the recipes in there in a spreadsheet. It but does then, the math for you too. It's got the math. Yeah, I broke it down so it's got the equation and everything and like included in it. And then, but then like Sarah would go and add recipes, and I would still have mine open and I didn't save it yet. So now there's like recipe spreadsheet version one, version two in the Dropbox. Which one's the right one? <laughs> Did it have a name at the time? So sometimes they just say like recipe in there. Or you, Jason's conflicted coffee, Sarah's yeah. conflicted coffee. It's just chaos with that stuff. And, and I, I guess I found it. I'll write my recipes right here, okay? My I'm a notebook. Cool. You, guys, you guys are of the same, same soul, <laughs> I'm it, telling you. It turned out that I had been putting all the fusions, every single fusion that we've ever had, I put in that spreadsheet. And it's, it, it you can't dispute that because I can't, the, the spreadsheet makes the math for you. So if I want to make 200 shakers, it'll tell me how to make 200 shakers. If I want to make 1,000, it'll tell me how to make 1,000. There's no way that I didn't put everything in that spreadsheet. I'm not hitting save. I'm getting my number and I'm going to the fusion room. It took us a while to figure out that that has to be what's happening. So I'm putting them in there, taking the time, not hitting save. And then I'm running, I'm writing my numbers down and running out of the room. I don't know how many times I've done that. And we were missing like five, what confusion recipes there? There's, there's like an ongoing joke for the one glitter in our warehouse that like for the most part, we've either been able to deconstruct the recipe if we couldn't find it or we ended up finding the recipe, but there's a glitter that we have called classified and we literally don't know the recipe at all. And we have no idea what it was. Oh, well, at least with our foils, we can go match. It might take us a 20, 30 minutes running throughout the studio <laughs> trying to figure out, okay, what foil is this? What company is this? I got to find the number. I got to order it again. But um, for formulas, uh, I mean, I still teach. I still teach decorative finishing. So in my private painting group, I teach two new finishes every single month. And when I'm doing the finish, I'm writing down my notes. I so, love But that. that does get typed into a document which goes into a file which goes into the the painting group and everything uh -huh, else. Yes. A paper trail, but um i have binders we call them either formula books but they're formula books i've probably got three or four dozen of them of finishes that i've learned and taught throughout the years i love That's that awesome. i wish that i 
I ever kept the paper trail. I say that I'm always going to, and I do it real good for like four days. And I'm done. So the next six round. Being, being old school, I still have a, a day timer that I open up and it has everything written down. I, I use my phone for an alarm to remind myself to be somewhere, but that's about it. <laughs> Sarah collects those things like day planners and month planners and year planners. So and, many planners. And organizational bins and boxes and drawers. She's, she, she collects the things for organizing. He's not wrong. <laughs> I have decision paralysis. I don't know what it is I want to use it for. There's so many things that can go in that bin, so it's best not to put anything in it. <laughs> so now we got bins and things, but we do not have things in bins. <laughs> well, no, eventually, eventually the two might come together for you when, when Sarah's ready. <laughs> or when Jason's had enough and he goes through my craft closet and starts pulling stuff out. I'll literally end up going through it and being like, we had bins for this stuff all this time? Like that's, <laughs> that's what happens. It's not the, it's not, it, that has, it has actually happened before. Mm -hmm. Well, it does sound like it doesn't matter what your business is. We all have some of the same issues yeah. that we deal with. <laughs> right. Well, just slightly different, okay? This is true. There's definitely rooms dedicated in the warehouse to storing personal stuff. <laughs> our Christmas yeah. and Halloween decorations are in a room here. <laughs> well, we also, we gave up our shed because we bagged glitter in the shed originally. That's where we started. And then when we were done bagging glitter in that shed, there nothing could happen in there again that was not craft related. You could clean that thing as thorough as you think that you can ever clean it, but it's never going to get that glitter out. He'd have glitter on every single tool he ever put in there for the rest of his life. It had to go. Yeah, the week after we moved the business into its first warehouse, I demoed the shed. I was like, there's no way, there's no way this shed can store belongings anymore. He said, you ain't coming back here, take it down. All gone. And still to this day, there's dirt in the spot where the shed stood. <laughs> I had this one um, customer, male customer, fell in love with one of my, well, he probably didn't fall in love with the finish, but he showed the finish to a customer, okay, being a female, and she hired him to do it. And he said, you know, you could at least told me at the end of that job, I was going to lose my man card because I was going to be covered in glitter. Oh, <laughs> welcome to it. He literally said he took all of his clothes and threw them away because they were covered. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing that could be done after that. We had, so one of the like local news- there's glitter in your beard. And I can't believe you even referred to the facial hair on my face as a beard. It was the mustache part anyway, but yes, I didn't mean to cut you off. I don't know if there's any time in my life that I'll grow enough hair to have what can be called a beard. There's glitter on your upper Someday, head. someday I'll be old enough. What I was saying was uh, we had, Sorry. we recently had a, um, a uh, news lady come in and just oh, did like a short face. feature thing. And after she did her spiel, she was like, so um, how do you get the glitter off your hands? And I just like <laughs> looked at her and was like, you don't. Yes. You do what you can. Yeah, you, you don't. Like <laughs> there's no special magic trick that makes glitter go away from things. It is 100% there. She wanted all of it off though. And I was confused that she didn't know where she was going that morning, like girl. Yeah, she's like, are you sure? I was like, I mean, you can use baby wipes as a good, you know, they help. She's like, oh, well, I'll take some. Do you got some? <laughs> I do, and then down the hall, but I guess. We... And we did. We went and got her baby wipes, and she wiped, you know, she wiped every little fragment that she could get off. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just say anytime I open the glitter, I sometimes regret it. Um, but it's just part of what we do. There's got to be a little glitter. Right. Mm -hmm. Or a lot. Yeah, shit a little sparkle. Because, you know, even we use, um, this is one of our rollers that created the, des the design using the foil adhesive, and then we glittered it. That's so pretty. Yeah. I was, so, was looking at the roller, actually. I was going to say, that's kind. Of, would that be kind of like the, like, baking rolling things that they have? Like, a that leave a pattern in, like, fondant, you know what I mean? Ours are different. So the I'm just imagining. That side. A pattern is higher, so the pattern is raised. Oh. He's looking at your Instagram. I think right the now. cookies are the the pattern is um 
in instead of out, recessed. So when they're Ooh. when you do the cookies, it's different. It's so different, but those rollers are beautiful. I just want to collect those. <laughs> I I'll have one I've never used. Them. But I've like, actually used our red rollers on cookies as well. I was having one day where I thought, oh, let's try it. We could go roll a pattern through this. Yeah, and you why not? definitely have special kind of cookie recipe, okay? Because the recipe I used, the cookie dough didn't hold the pattern really uh, well. So I don't know what, I mean, it's not just any cookie dough. I mean, it needs to be more structured probably. Yeah. yeah, you have to have some kind of product that's going to hold its, um, hold the pattern. Well, I'm excited. Be, well, I wanted to roll or that because you saw I got the stencils. <laughs> to do the our kitchen, but now forget them stencils, get the roller and we'll just foil the kitchen walls. Okay. You can roll the like pattern fun, with adhesive and then glitter your walls, come on. This is true. <laughs> Sounds like you'll be working on the road for a little bit, Chris. Yeah, it's like fun. You have a lot of glitter really? hey. content to make. Hey, it's a good time. You're thinking about the roller, are you? I am thinking deeply about the roller. <laughs> Where do we go by the rollers? Yeah. <laughs> do you, go, you guys don't... His, his craft bin's getting bigger. <laughs> do you guys sell the rollers or do you guys buy them from somewhere else? We sell the rollers. Fantastic. So there you go. Get it. Yeah, we got a nice collection. I think there's about 50 different patterns that you can choose from. I don't ever put Ooh, is there like a Is there like a Moroccan pattern? Yes, there is. See, set. That's the pattern that I got to stencil on the walls of my kitchen with paint. But if I can do it like this, I'm... Hey, there's all kinds of options. <laughs> that is actually really cool because we were going to... Were we going to model? You were going to stencil it, right? You've had so many different options for what? this kitchen. For the kitchen. For the kitchen? No, paint. Black paint. That's why I got the... I got, like, paint stencil. Like, the big stencils for your wall that has, like, cutouts of Moroccan patterns so that I could put it up and do the... Right. I want to do that, yeah. I know you do, baby. We'll do whatever you want, sir. As long as I get the craft in the meantime, I'm in. See, this is why, this is how I get him soaked in. People are always like, how do you get your husband crafting? I'm like, you just got to find what he likes. Find what makes his face light up. <laughs> That's awesome. Apparently it's rollers. <laughs> well, I would love to challenge you guys to doing a live with you sometime soon because I would love to be able to either take the fear out of the foils, uh -huh. show you how to use the rollers or whatever, so. We have to set that up. Whether you, if you could come out here, that'd be even cooler if we can set that up. But if we do something virtual, something or many things will happen because I'm really excited. I've been meaning to, you know, get more in touch with you anyway, but I I will get better responses. I literally will put my phone down and I'm like, ooh, what's this? Or ooh, what am I doing over here? Jason asked me to do two things for him earlier. He came back in for the two things and here I am labeling with Emily doing something different. He's like, did you ever get that glitter? I'm like, I literally forgot what I was doing as soon as you walked out the door. I'm really sorry. I want to do the intertwined circles in my bathroom. They look like bubbles. Yeah, so this is what helps me. <laughs> and if I make a little sticky note, and I'll stick them to my phone or I stick them to my purse or they're in my car. They're all over the place. Okay, my whole desk is covered in those stupid sticky notes. That's funny. <laughs> Definitely got to set some more things up because this is so much fun. And you could literally, I keep saying, like, you could just literally put it on anything. I think the, the whole game changer for me was the clothes. When I saw you guys rolling them on clothes and stuff, I'm like, there's literally nothing you can't put this on. Yeah, you had the jean jacket out at TumblrCon. Yeah, I mean, there's everything. We just basically say it's all in prep of the surface. If you can prep your surface where the adhesive will stick, you can go forward on anything. So there is there is more to prep, though, because you can't just try to go throw it on anything, like the cleats. I mean, I really had to work. I mean, I sand at those cleats. Okay. Right. <laughs> there's definitely some work in there. No, let's not make yeah. it look easy. Well, I mean, there's certain things. I mean, if we just got a piece of wood, a piece of MDF, I mean, there's some really simple things that I could just, you know, all day long, just whip them out. Right. But when you have, a, you know, even the felt hat, okay, there was prep into this. I didn't just go and throw foil adhesive on here. I did sand this hat. I sealed this hat twice, put the foil adhesive on, and then finally foiled it. I wouldn't have even think that you'd have to sand the hat, but that makes so much sense because there's... Well, I was trying to, like... Reduce the amount of fuzz right. that felt mm -hmm. hat because this is a cheap felt hat. This is like a ten dollar hat. Don't look at no more. Ten dollar hat. Um, you know, 
And I know that there are felt hats that are definitely more expensive and they're better quality. And for I do understand that you can foil them easier. I was trying to make it no matter what anybody bought they'd be able to be successful with it. Sure. Whether it's a cheap felt hat <laughs> or an expensive one. Right. I think that's so cool. I love all of it. We're definitely going to have to set up some more things with you guys for sure because this has been a lot of fun. Um, I don't want to eat up your whole day. I'm actually kind of jealous that you still have most of your day. It's about to be 3 o'clock for us. <laughs> well, yeah, i got to go home now right now because there's an electrician waiting for me, Okay. <laughs> Well, if people would like to find you and your amazing um, products, where can they find you? Uh, artisticpaintingstudio.com uh, is our main website, but Artistic Painting Studio is definitely our handle on every social media. We are on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Pinterest. Did I miss anything? I don't think so, especially because you hit Twitch? Pinterest. Oh, no, Twitch. We didn't do Twitch. <laughs> And we don't tweet. <laughs> I don't tweet anymore. It's, the tweets are dead. It's X. You X now. Right? I, yeah, I don't I even know what they call it. It's true. What is X? Yeah. I only have tweets on 14. They say you tweet on X. That's uh, dumb. Uh, That's dumb. That's what most people say. Don't say that to me ever again. Now they say it. That's right. It's out. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it's been a lot of fun hanging out with you. Uh, me and Jason will absolutely be in contact with you shortly about doing some more things together i'm excited let's uh let's foil some wow. stuff absolutely i'm gonna foil stuff today i promise you that <laughs> uh-huh don't make don't break that promise there right. Jason. well I'm you know, i cleaned the craft room yesterday so there's a good potential of this happening yeah you gotta open a dang thing you gotta unbox the thing when we get home anyways so you got stuff to do i got stuff to do you want me to go get back to work you always let's get back to work and never bring the kettle to the pot now Pour the tea.